Riddis pours over a book while practicing on the woodland flute. She remains dreadful at it. The instant you begin speaking, she nearly leaps out of her skin and hides the book. She somehow hadn't noticed you. I, I thought you were the debt collectors. You can't sneak up on me like that, she stammers, struggling to regain her composure. <coughs> you take note of a woman who appears quite ill. As it turns out, she is none other than Riddus's mother. <coughs> she is in no small amount of pain. Will you give her something to ease her suffering? The item you've proffered has no effect on her illness. But I appreciate the thought. Riddus's mother hands you mysterious card three as a token of her gratitude. She begins speaking of Riddus, who has been preparing the medicine that helps her get through the day. She blames her illness, and therefore herself, for making Riddus's life so difficult. The more she talks, the more her face drops. Been a while since we've had any outsiders, the innkeeper says, beckoning the party inside. It turns out this inn is simply a place where the poor, lost souls trapped in the bewildering wood may recover. You may stay as long as you like, free of charge. The wooden dining table practically groans under the weight of the platters upon it, all brimming with meats and vegetables from the bewildering wood. I've certainly earned this, you say to yourself, as you slide into your seat at the table, positively drooling over the feast before you. Melanie takes no note of your boorish behavior uttering a small prayer of thanksgiving before reaching for a plate of vegetables. Mar sits, eyes fixed on the food upon the table, statuesque in his stillness. What a good boy. Mar clears the entire table in a matter of seconds, even emptying the water barrel in a single gulp. He lets out a self-satisfied burp that sends a small jet of just-drank water arcing out onto the floor. The sun sinks low, and the day draws to a close. A scream pierces the silence. Fire! You leap out of bed, adrenaline coursing through your veins. The others follow suit, and before long, you've burst through the front door and into the street. Riddus's house is ablaze, a nearby villager screams.
My mother is still inside, British shrieks, darting past you to fetch water from the well south of the village. Riddus is gathering water in an attempt to fight the blaze all on her own. Mar's eyes light up. He scrambles over the edge of the well and sucks the well dry in an instant. He pokes at his swollen belly and gestures toward Riddus' house, as if to say, Get me back there, quick. Quickly, put it out. You have to put it out, Riddus screams at Mar. Mar douses the house with the water he sucked up from the well. The fire is reduced to mere embers, and all is well. Or so you think. Something darts out from behind the house and attacks. Lucky. The fiery beast dispatched, you return to putting out the last of the blaze with Mars' help. Riddus's mother, now safe, tells you the creature came out of nowhere and set the house aflame. What would bring a creature of fire to a place like this, you wonder? Light breaks on a new day, and the commotion of the fire feels but a nightmare. You lead your party to Riddus' house to ask for safe passage out of the bewildering wood. Though spared from complete collapse, Riddus' home has been thoroughly scorched. Riddus' mother tells you she was once deceived by a crooked merchant and plunged into debt. 
Riddis has been working to repay the debt ever since her mother took ill. You lightly press your thumb and forefinger to the corner of each eye, a mixture of sadness and anger swirling within you. Riddus sits alone in one of its rooms, the air thick with the smell of char. There shouldn't be any fire creatures for miles, she grumbles. She says the monster appeared while she was playing the woodland flute last night. As to why any monsters, let alone fire monsters, appeared, well... Despite the circumstances, you ask Riddus to lead you out of the bewildering wood as promised. I did promise that, didn't I? She says wearily, rising from her seat. The poor girl is clearly still in shock. Why do you want to venture out beyond the bewildering wood anyway? She inquires as she gathers this and that in preparation to leave. We are in search of the dragon, you say valiantly, adding, the reward will be significant should we defeat him. Honesty is the best policy. Sounds like a real risky way to make a living, she replies flatly, feigning interest. A group of Ivory Order people came through here just the other day, she explains. You connect the dots with malice, those three. You seethe. At last, Riddus is ready to depart for the edge of the bewildering wood. This road takes... Upon seeing that Riddus is with you, he steps aside and lets you through. The eastern portion of the woods certainly does not want for thick, soupy fog. Turn away, ready to lead the party deeper into the bewildering wood. Riddus appears to be familiar with him. She calls him Mr. O. Here you are, young lady, he says, handing her a slip of paper. Mr. O explains, Riddus did not have a fire insurance policy at the time of the conflagration, and so she shall have to pay in full. 
I'll thank you kindly to pay by the end of the month. Bye now, Mr. O says, receding from view as he returns to the forest. He he. Riddus lets out a bemused chuckle, her demeanor remarkably calm for what has just transpired. She pulls the woodland flute from her cloak and begins softly playing. Riddus's ear-splitting performance, shall we say, draws monsters out from behind the trees. Within moments, they are nearly upon you. That's odd. I must have made a mistake, Riddis says, burying her face in her old book once more. She opens the book to a particular page and thrusts it in your face. You can't tell anyone in the village I let you see this, okay? It's a page of sheet music with a note scrawled beside it that reads, Play this lucky tune to reverse your financial fortunes and make money woes a thing of the past. No matter how many times I played this last night, our debt never went down. She fumes, incensed. You inspect the page a bit more carefully. Off in a corner, in letters so small as to be illegible, another message reads, May summon monsters if played incorrectly. You finally see that so long as Riddus holds the flute, this is nothing more than a monster conjuring melody. You snatch the woodland flute from her hands. You have lost your flute.